Hello everyone, my name is Oliver and I am the project coordinator for Project Amazing Grace. And this week we are starting a hedgehog cake making competition for Hedgehog Awareness Week. So from the 30th of April to the 6th of May, we are encouraging everybody to make a hedgehog themed cake. This is to raise awareness for the massive decline in hedgehogs in the UK and to raise money to save them. You can donate however much or however little you want, but what we thought would be nice is that if you enter the competition, how about donating however much you spent on ingredients? Because if you can spend it on a fake hedgehog, then why not spend it on saving a real hedgehog as well? Now here is the video of me making my hedgehog cake, telling you a little bit about the rules and telling you a little bit about how to make your garden hedgehog friendly. Thank you. Right, so I've got the list of ingredients on my phone here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these two because hopefully that will give me something that I can then carve down into the rough shape of a hedgehog before I put, you know, other stuff on it. So, let's give that a go. Baking powder, one and a half tablespoons. Now, I can't really remember what a tablespoon is. I think it's the big one, but, you know, I'm not I'm not here to make cakes. I am here to save hedgehogs. So that feels like a tablespoon. I'm just gonna add a few eggs in. Two specifically. And crack those in. Just on the weekend or on an evening, grab your family or your friends or your dog, it doesn't matter. Just grab anyone you like, anything you like, and make a nice cake and try and make it look like a hedgehog cake. And if it does, then you might win the competition. Call that in. It says olive oil on the thing, but I'm pretty sure we just reuse this and fill it with vegetable oil each time. Let's see. I mean, it'll either taste like olives or vegetables. Madagascan vanilla extract, which I'm sure is the best kind. Um, so you can probably hear that I then turned on the tap. It says boiling water, but I'm just gonna let that run for a bit, heat it up, put the warm water in instead of boiling because I don't have time to do boiling. I've got things to do. I've got hedgehogs to save. I might need a bigger bowl. Right, so there is that warm water. It feels pretty close to boiling anyway, so I'll, if you end up making a hedgehog cake, please plan it out better than I have. Please have a right sized bowl and all the right ingredients and maybe look at what a tablespoon is. Oh, that looks awful. I'm gonna put that in there. That looks just terrible. And not only that, now it's warm. That looks perfect. Basically a hedgehog already. Which one? I'm gonna go with this one. For absolutely no reason. Oh, I've dropped it. It's gonna go right down. Oh, it's gonna go right down. And across, yes, look at that. <laughs> That's hopefully gonna mix into a wonderful batter, which I'll then put in there with some, I need to line that with maybe butter or bacon sheets or something. And then once it's all out, then let it cool, and then we can add some frosting. Fantastic. Might be quite a small hedgehog, sort of carve it out like that. Let's, let's see. Ow. Right, there we go. That's nice and lumpy. Look at that. Right, so I think, just shove that in the oven, and we'll move on with the next thing. Hello everyone, I'm out here in the woods to talk to you quickly about hedgehogs, specifically the five quick things that you can do in your own garden to make your garden hedgehog friendly. Number one is access and egress. So can a hedgehog get into your garden and get out again? Can it get under your fence? Or if it can't, is there a small hole in the fence that they can get through? And make sure it's a safe hole because once they start going through, they can't then come out again because of their spines. We sell a metal plate shaped like a hedgehog that has a hole in the middle. You can put this on any sort of fence or wall that you've drilled through to make it look nice and to make sure that you have the right size. Number two is once they're into your garden, can they eat anything? So this is doing things like planting wild flowers to attract insects and bugs. Things like not using pesticides to kill all the bugs. You can also do this by leaving leaf piles or leaving piles of wood or compost heaps. Stuff that will attract insects and bugs and make a little ecosystem for the hedgehog to then feed off. 
and remember that companion planting is a great way of controlling which bugs and insects you want in your garden while still leaving a food source. Number three is nesting and resting. These again are things like compost heaps that provides great cover, things like a dense hedgerow. Is there a gap under a shed or under a decking? Also, you could take an old piece of drainage pipe or a turned over pot and fill that with leaves. And of course, the final thing you can do is just make a hedgehog box. These are great things to attract hedgehogs. They are great ways of hedgehogs staying warm and dry. Number four is then drink or drown. Now this is making sure that you have a clean, safe water source for your hedgehogs. So is it contaminated, perhaps from a nearby flower bed that you used chemicals on that have then washed into the water? And is it shallow enough that if the hedgehog falls in, it's not gonna drown? The other thing is thinking about large bodies of water, so maybe a pond or a pool. Have you put any measures in place to make sure that the hedgehogs don't fall in? And if they do, have you put any measures in place to make sure that they can get out? And the final thing is do or die. This is the everyday things that you do in your garden that might pose a threat or a hazard to a hedgehog. This is things like strimming. Are you making sure that the area is clear before you start strimming? Also things like drain covers. Are you making sure that those are safe and secure? And make sure that garden chemicals aren't accessible for a hungry or thirsty hedgehog. And any sort of netting that you have in your garden. It's very easy because of hedgehog spines to get stuck and tangled up. Then rat traps and pesticides. Just be very, very very careful about any sort of poisons or traps that you put out because they're not species specific. There is nothing stopping a hedgehog eating poison meant for slugs or rats and there is nothing stopping a hedgehog getting caught in a trap that is meant for rats. So that is it. That is the five things that you can do very easily that makes your garden hedgehog friendly. So let's get back to making a cake. <laughs> what I can do is make the buttercream. That is something I want to do. I'm going to do it right this time. So we have to mess it around and put it in different bowls. We just put it straight in there and straight in there. 600 grams sifted. Okay. Aha. A sift. No, sieve. Um, you can also use fondant icing, which I believe is the one that kind of comes in like sheets. If you have a hedgehog, you can then just drape it over the top. It's quite easy to mold and it looks quite nice because it's you know, an even finish everywhere. Uh, but I don't have any of that, and I prefer the taste of this. Let's go a bit extra because I think some of it's going to fall out and be left in the bowl and everything. I've slightly melted the butter. No idea if that's the right thing to do. Oh, there's a bit of a mess behind the camera here. Although I put too much in it anyway, didn't I? There you go. I'm so smart, I can predict my own stupidity. Okay, I'm just going to leave that and hope it works out. We will be back checking the cake in a minute. This, look at that. That is our cake. It's been cooling for a little bit because in order to put the buttercream on it needs to be cold enough that it doesn't all melt. It's come out okay, I think. It's nice and spongy, that should be all right. And the next step is to get it out and try and make it look like a hedgehog. <laughs> Other maybe? Second time. Ha! Perfect. I've moved the camera. You were over there. Now you're here. We're gonna have a little bit of a more close-up video because now I'm trying to make it look like a hedgehog. Hedgehoggy. And that, would you not say that looks like a hedgehog? I don't think that's too bad. So I've got all these toothpicks which I'm going to stick in like that to try and give the illusion of spikes. All of you guys that are much better than me will probably be able to do this in a cooler way and in a more edible way. But I'm just kind of showing you the only way that I can do it. Hey! I don't think that's too bad at all. This is my little hedgehog cake. Definitely not the world's best, but that should give you some hope. 
but you can definitely do a better one. He's got little eyes, he's got some spikes, <laughs> he's got sort of a brownish colour that's a bit rough, meant to look like a bit like fur. I don't think that's too bad. Now, if you were going to enter the competition, it is really easy. What you're going to do is you're going to take a picture of your cake, maybe from a few different angles, give us a good look at it, and then you're going to post those pictures on either Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And tag Project Amazing Grace in your photo, or hashtag Project Amazing Grace. And that's it. So if you think you can do better than this, which 100% you can, I believe in you, then give it a go, enter the competition, and raise awareness for hedgehogs. So thank you everybody for watching, and I hope this has inspired you to make a hedgehog cake and to help save Britain's hedgehogs. Be sure to keep your eyes open for future posts about the prize and the panel of judges who will be assessing all of your cakes. I hope to see a lot of your amazing hedgehog cakes very soon. So thank you for watching and good luck.